Mouse DPI has some hidden properties that influence the aim of every FPS player. It has even shaped the esports scene, deciding who succeeds and who fails, all because of a seemingly arbitrary decision of what DPI someone chooses to play on. Now, if you're clued into FPS gaming, you may be thinking that this has something to do with input latency. Well, no. While it has become popular to play on 1600 DPI for slightly reduced latency, the difference is so small that I don't find it can be perceived and any marginal benefits of this pale in comparison to what I'm about to show you. Let's start out by taking a look at the average mouse sensitivity of professional FPS players for the three most popular DPI settings. In Apex Legends, we have 44.6, 36.7, and 32.7 centimeters per 360 being the real-life mouse movement needed to rotate 360 degrees in-game. So a lower number is faster, and a higher number is slower. Also keeping in mind that players can adjust their in-game sensitivity. So a 400 DPI player on 2 in-game sensitivity could bump up to 800 DPI and play on one in-game for the exact same centimeters per 360. Despite this, as we can see here, the higher the DPI, the faster the sensitivity. CSGO and CS2 follows the same trend with 60.6, 49.9, and 45.9. And Overwatch 2 also follows suit with 46, 37.8, and 30.3 centimeters per 360. So what does this mean? Well, there appears to be a strong correlation between the DPI you play on and the mouse sensitivity you find most comfortable. That makes sense, considering any time you spend on your computer not playing an FPS game, so browsing YouTube, or checking out my Clawmate mouse mod over at StruthGamingGear.com, video all about it in the description, is time that you are moving your mouse around according to that DPI. A higher DPI, like 1600, only needs fingertip and slight wrist movements whereas 400 DPI requires your whole arm to move around. It stands to reason that the sensitivity you find most comfortable in-game will use similar movements. Over time, we learn what mouse movements are needed to move our crosshair or cursor certain distances on screen. When that expectation doesn't line up, we don't feel comfortable and our aim suffers. For example, if you suddenly played on a really high DPI like 3200 and a low sensitivity like 50 centimeters in Apex, you would be throwing your arm all around the mousepad to aim and move around. But when you open up a death box and try to manage your inventory, these large movements will throw your cursor to the edge of your screen and you'll suddenly have to transition to tiny fingertip mouse movements. That mismatch between in-game sensitivity and DPI feels very awkward, so you would naturally adjust these variables to better align. Playing on a DPI that aligns with your in-game sensitivity isn't the end of it. In fact, it's the root of the problem. Just because your sensitivity feels comfortable doesn't mean it is the most performative setting for you. You can make just about any configuration feel comfortable or normal over time. Let me give you a first-hand example of how this works. I've been playing and even working on aim trainers since their inception and in the first few years especially, the idea that higher sensitivities, so about 20 to 35 centimeters, were best was quite popular. As a 40 to 65-ish centimeter player at the time, I found playing on faster sensitivity to be incredibly inconsistent, uncomfortable, and most importantly, my aim was worse. Despite this, I tried time and time again to make it work. My biggest issue was it simply feeling too fast. So eventually, I decided to force the issue and make it feel comfortable. I did this by increasing my DPI to 3200 from my usual 800. Within a day or two, these faster sensitivities now felt normal, even comfortable, just like that. They even started to feel a bit slow, which makes sense considering how high my DPI was set at the time. What I found was that aiming on these faster settings felt normal and I felt in control of what I was doing. The problem was, even after weeks, my aim simply wasn't as good and my progress stalled. This will differ from person to person, but for me, the problem I found was that I was no longer fully utilizing my wrist and arm to aim. It was almost purely in the hand and some of the wrist which just didn't afford me enough control over my aim. These days, depending on the game's field of view, I play between 35 and 45 centimeters. The same centimeter per 360 on high field of view feels slower than the same centimeter per 360 on low field of view. This is because of pixels per degree, but I won't get into that now. 
This is a range that fully utilizes my fingers, hand, wrist, arm, and even my shoulder and chest to an extent. To make this in-game range feel comfortable, a DPI around 800 seems to feel good when using two screens. These aren't the correct settings to use by any means, I'm just explaining my journey with DPI and sensitivity to end up with aim that I consider to be high level and effortless. I don't need to warm up, aim train, or even play regularly to perform well enough. When I see a distance on screen, be it in regular PC use or in game, I have a good idea of what mouse movement is needed to get there. That was a bit of a detour, but we now know that your DPI influences what in-game sensitivity feels comfortable, and that comfort doesn't equal performance. I feel confident in saying that most FPS players haven't put much thought into the DPI they use. If I had to guess, I'd say people on 800 mostly made no choice at all and simply used the default settings of most mice. Players on 1600 likely hit the DPI switch on their mouse once because the default 800 felt a bit too slow for general PC use, or they heard about the reduced input latency. Players on 400 likely copied the DPI of pro players in Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike being a great example of how DPI can shape who becomes pro and who doesn't. Particularly in the early days of CS 1.6 and CS Source, someone playing on 400 would tend to gravitate toward a lower mouse sensitivity which essentially grants them better accuracy for free, due to the slow pace and unique aiming requirements of the TAC FPS genre. It's not unreasonable to think that DPI choice has determined or at least influenced the success or failure of many players over the years. A massive 68.5% of Counter-Strike pros play on 400 DPI, compared to only 25% in Apex and a tiny 8.8% in Overwatch 2. This checks out. Counter-Strike by far suits lower sensitivities the most with its limited verticality, movement, and angle-holding playstyle. You can get away with playing on lower settings for better accuracy because the usual downsides are largely irrelevant. Apex, featuring a combination of close, mid, and long-ranged combat, does feel the trade-off of very low sensitivities, so we only see 25% playing on 400 DPI. Overwatch 2, on the other hand, is almost all close to mid-ranged combat, with plenty of verticality and mobility. Out of the three games, it suffers the most from the drawbacks of lower sensitivity, and as a result, we only see 8.8% of pros using 400 DPI. To simplify things, Counter-Strike can be considered slow, Apex is moderate, and Overwatch is fast. Likewise, 400 is slow, 800 is moderate, and 1600 is fast. For our 800 DPI pro players, they make up 29.2% of CS, 64.7% for Apex, and a massive 71.8% for Overwatch. We see a huge swing toward 800 DPI for both Apex and Overwatch as they both much better suit more moderate mouse sensitivities. Finally, for 1600 DPI, they make up only 2.4% of Counter-Strike, 10.3% of Apex, and a sizable 19.5% of Overwatch. Considering Overwatch tends toward fast gameplay and close engagements, it makes sense that it is home to the highest number of 1600 DPI players. Knowing all of this, when we consider FPS games as a whole, there is an evident advantage to playing on particular DPI for certain games. If you want to be a pro CS player, it stands to reason that playing on the same DPI as almost 70% of the professionals would be a good idea. If you use something like 1600 or 3200, the odds are stacked against you in making it to the highest level. There will always be outliers and you can play on high DPI and low sensitivity, but for the majority of players, you will simply aim better and therefore perform better on lower sensitivity ranges that are made more comfortable by using a lower mouse DPI. It's interesting to consider how many great players out there never made it or didn't perform to their potential, simply because they were using an unsuitable mouse DPI. Practically speaking, how do we use this knowledge to our advantage? First off, if you're hesitant or don't quite believe how influential DPI can be, I invite you to crank it up to 3200 or so for a few days and see how your perception of sensitivity changes. If you're already that high, do the opposite, down to 400. If you don't know what type of aimer you are, it's a good idea to experiment with the general ranges of low, medium and high sensitivity to see what you perform best on. Use 400 for a few days, 1000-ish for a few days and 2000 plus for a few days. 
feel free to change your in-game sensitivity around to whatever is comfortable at the time. The big takeaway from all of this is to remember that comfort doesn't equal performance, and you can make just about anything feel comfortable over time. Don't search for a sensitivity that feels comfortable. Search for something that you perform best on and make it feel comfortable. We can think of our centimeters per 360 as a setting we can adjust to change our aiming performance, and our DPI as a setting that adjusts what feels comfortable. It is really hard to aim well on a setting that doesn't feel comfortable, which is why adjusting your DPI can be so incredibly useful for exploring mouse sensitivity. Hypothetically, let's imagine a 3200 DPI, 10 centimeter per 360 player who's always struggled with aiming. Let's give them a theoretical perfect sensitivity for them for the game they're playing of 36 centimeters per 360. If they were to only change their in-game sensitivity to reach that 36, it would feel like they're moving their mouse through mud and aim feels impossibly slow. That mismatch between sensitivity and DPI creates discomfort and their perfect setting feels terrible and they don't perform well on it. But if this player were to drop down to 400 or 800 DPI for a few hours or days and then try 36 centimeters or perhaps even something lower like 50 centimeters and then close that gap to 36, that mismatch disappears. Aiming feels natural and comfortable, and now they have access to their perfect sensitivity. If you would like to learn more about the Clawmate mouse mod, you can check out this video here where I cover exactly how and why it works. Thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.